you're sitting the AQA A-level biology in 2025, you need to watch this. I have gone through every past paper since the new specification began, analyzed which questions have come up from which topic, and I found some really interesting patterns. Now, this is not a prediction video. I need to make that explicitly clear. There's no actual accurate way of predicting. I'd say it's more like misleading. So instead, what this video is, is sharing the patterns that I found, including what are the most common topics that come up on paper one for AQA A-level biology, which topic haven't come up in a while and which topics come up on both of those lists and therefore if it was me doing my A-levels I would definitely be revising those topics in thorough detail. Hey everyone and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology. Now if you are new here then I'm Miss Estrick and I've been teaching since 2009 in schools and online and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you the patterns that I've found from my past paper analysis and more importantly the useful patterns and information that you need to know to help you to inform your vision to revise smarter, not necessarily harder. Although it does help to work harder as well. Now, this isn't a prediction video, as I've already said, and I'm not saying that what I go through today is definitely coming up in 2025. However, I'm pointing out some important patterns to help you inform your vision. And like I said, I would highly recommend that you thoroughly revise these topics. So let's dive in, starting with the list of the most commonly assessed topics on paper one for A-level AQA biology. If you haven't already revised the topics that I'm about to go through, make sure you pause, write down this list because you need to get those slotted into your revision timetable as soon as possible. There are five topics on this list of the most commonly assessed topics. Well, actually kind of five or six because number one on the list is carbohydrates and proteins, which technically are two different spec points. So let's call it six most commonly assessed topics. Number one being carbohydrates, number two being protein. Now it makes sense because those are such fundamental topics and the building blocks for other molecules and therefore components of cells, tissues, organs and the organisms. So carbohydrates that covers things like the monosaccharides, disaccharides, the polysaccharides as well as well as some of the biochemical tests and proteins that's looking at your general structure of amino acids, your primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary structure as well as enzymes that falls under that topic as well. Number three then on on the list is immunity. This is such a challenging topic from topic two, and it's a favorite for application questions as well to make it that little bit harder. Number four is gas exchange. This is a classic for paper one, whether it is gas exchange in mammals, so looking at the lungs, gas exchange in terrestrial insects, looking at the spiracles and the tracheal system, gas exchange in fish, looking at the gills, the gill filaments and the lamellae, or even gas exchange in plants. Number Number five is mass transport. Now, partly the reason why this is so commonly assessed is it's a huge chunk of the spec because mass transport is actually split into mass transport in animals and mass transport in plants. So that means that covers the structure of the heart, the cardiac cycle, oxyhemoglobin dissociation curves, tissue fluid. Then if we move on to plants, transpiration and cohesion tension theory and translocation of sucrose. And number six on the list is genetic diversity. This comes up a lot on paper one. So this is things like linking gene mutations and chromosome mutations and meiosis to having that genetic diversity within a population and how that can lead to natural selection and evolution. And then you have those two different types of selection that you learn for paper one, destabilizing and directional selection. So those were the six most commonly assessed topics from my past paper analysis for paper one. So if you haven't already revised those thoroughly, or if any of the topics on my list you think, uh, I really don't know that very well, then definitely go and revise those. And if you need more help, check out any of my YouTube videos that cover those topics, or I've got my able notes which cover it in detail go to the key marking points key summaries to help you with that as well but however you're going to revise it get it in your revision plan number two then is looking at what are some of the big topics that weren't assessed in 2024 in particular they weren't assessed in paper one but i'm also going to point out which weren't assessed at all because those are going to be big ones to pay attention to there are eight topics i'm going to be talking you through some of which overlap with the previous list and that includes number 
number one on the list, which is the biggest one that I recommend you revise in detail for paper one, and that is mass transport in plants. This, as I said, was one of the most commonly assessed topics on the list, and it didn't come up at all on papers in 2024, paper one or paper three. You could argue that it did come up in the essay though for paper three, because you could have actually talked about it in one of the essay titles. So AQA might have ticked it off that way. But in terms of explicit questions, there were no explicit questions about translocation in plants or transpiration and cohesion tension theory. So I would highly recommend that you know those two topics inside out, particularly translocation. Number two on the list is nucleic acids. So DNA, RNA, and semi-conservative replication of DNA. This topic didn't really get assessed much. Again, you could have linked it to the essay, but there were very, very few questions that just focused on those. So I'd make sure that you know the structures and the functions of those molecules, and you can confidently describe the process of semi-conservative replication, as well as how it gets linked to Meselson and Stahl's experiment as well, which isn't explicitly on the spec, but it does say it can come up as application questions. Again, I've got a whole YouTube video on that if you need it. Three is protein synthesis. This is a really important topic and it didn't come up in 2024. So make sure you know transcription, translation, you know the enzymes involved, what each enzyme does, what the role of tRNA is, mRNA, the ribosome, all of that information. Number four on the list is another one of the mass transport topics, and that is hemoglobin and the cardiac cycle, which both fall under mass transport in animals. Now, there was a little bit in 2024 on mass transport in animals, but it was more focusing on the blood vessel. So there were some questions to do with the aorta, but there wasn't anything explicitly to do with hemoglobin, oxyhemoglobin dissociation curves or cardiac cycles. So make sure you understand those because there are some really tricky maths and graph style questions linked to that topic. Number five is meiosis and in brackets chromosome mutations. Now meiosis didn't come up at all. Mitosis did but that's a different spec point that's actually topic two. Meiosis is topic four but normally they have one or the other feature somewhere and meiosis didn't come up last year so maybe it comes up this year, maybe not, it's not saying that for certain. However, I would make sure that I knew meiosis completely. Now for A-level biology AQA, you don't literally need to know exactly what happens to the chromosomes in meiosis, you just need to know where variation is introduced. So crossing over, independent segregation, and you need to be able to recognize on an unfamiliar life cycle where meiosis is occurring. So you're looking for where you go from having a diploid cell to a haploid cell. Chromosome mutation didn't come up either but that rarely comes up it's such a small part of the spec but I thought it was worth noting. Number six on the list is gas exchange. Gas exchange in humans did come up in 2024 but we didn't have gas exchange in fish plants or terrestrial insects. So I would make sure if I was doing my A-levels that I knew gas exchange in fish and gas exchange in insects really well. Seven on the list is from topic four, that very first bit where you're looking at DNA, genes, and chromosomes. So knowing how DNA is organized into a chromosome, wrapping it around the histone proteins, knowing about introns, exons, features of the genetic code, those kinds of concepts. So that didn't come up explicitly in the exam questions. So I'd make sure I knew all of that information because it's a fundamental topic. And also it helps lead into other topics as well, which might also come up. And finally, number eight, eight on the list is immunity. Now immunity was assessed in the exams last year, 2024, in paper three, but it wasn't assessed in paper one. It was also assessed in 2023, a lot on paper one and in paper three. So they have covered it quite a lot in the last two years, but it didn't come up on paper one last year. So I'm just mentioning that one because it is a really commonly assessed topic and it didn't feature heavily last year. So there we go. Those are my two lists of topics that frequently come up, didn't feature much or at all last year. The overlaps in those two lists are particularly important. However, just because something didn't come up in 2024 does not mean it's definitely coming up in 2025 and vice versa. Just because something might have come up in 2024, it can still come up in 2025. The whole point of this video is to help you inform your revision to make sure whatever your plan is, 
is, the topics that are commonly assessed and didn't feature much last year, you've definitely got slotted in maybe a couple of extra times than some of the other topics, especially if it's a topic you personally find challenging to remember or understand. Now, a little bonus that I want to slot in as well is math skills and practical skills to prepare for for paper one based on the patterns I noticed from my past paper analysis. So the practicals that came up in paper one in 2024, there was one linked to enzymes, which would probably fall under required practical one. There was also a microscopy skills question. It didn't link explicitly to the mitosis root tip squash. It was more focusing on why do you have to have a thin layer of cells? Why would you use a stain? So like general skills to do with setting up the slides. So bear in mind those two came up in 2024. Also bear in mind though, microscopy skills is one of the most commonly assessed skills, probably because it falls under the theory, apparatus and technique and a required practical because you could have mitosis root tip squash as a practical, but there's also general things about knowing what magnification means, what resolution means, being able to do the magnification calculations, as well as things like why would you push down or why would you use your mounted needle? Why would you have to have a thin layer of cells? Why would you have to have a thin specimen? Why does a electron microscope have a higher resolution than a light microscope? Why would you use a stain? So there's lots of things to consider. And by the way, if you're thinking, I really don't know the answer to a lot of those questions, two options. I do have a YouTube video that goes through all of the required practicals, but in more detail, I have a brand new resource, which is a workbook that goes through all of the required practicals, common equipment, methods, results, common questions that come up, the short answer questions and the answers and exam style questions for all of those practicals. So if you want to be 100% in your practicals, I'd recommend the workbook. The video is good for an overview, but I'll link the workbook down below. And then finally, let's talk math skills. Uncertainty did come up last year and it has come up quite a lot recently. Students do really badly on uncertainty maths questions. And when students don't do well on a particular math skill, it gets assessed more frequently. That's why logs kept coming up and that's why uncertainty keeps coming up. So if you are uncertain, on uncertainty, please watch my uncertainty video on YouTube, which I actually made last year, just before the exams. So anyone that watched that, hopefully got full marks on that question because what I went through in that video was basically identical to what came up in the exam. But again, quite a few students didn't do well on that question. So maybe it'll come up again. So definitely check out the uncertainty video. And for logs, you could be asked to calculate or convert your raw value to logs or back again, or you might be asked why use a log scale and that'd be when you have a large range of results or more frequently they're giving you a log graph now the log graphs is the only element that i haven't covered in my logs youtube video but i have a brand new math skills workbook as well yes me and my team have been very busy because we've got an entire practical workbook an entire math skills workbook as well because so many of you kept asking for these that i wanted to make sure i made them with my team before the exams the math skill one is almost ready and in fact possibly it is ready by the time this comes out check the description you'll see it there if it is but that goes through every math skill how to do it modeled example short answer questions and exam style questions with the answers the last math skill i did want to talk to you about is serial dilutions or dilution series because this is a really tricky math skill and it didn't come up last year that i have already got in a youtube video just search miss estrick serial dilutions so that is it. What you need to know in terms of patterns I found from my past paper analysis to help inform your revision for paper one. And I really hope you found that helpful and it gives you a bit of an idea of how to maybe reshuffle, reorganize your revision to make sure that those topics we've gone through and the math skills and the practicals that didn't come up, you've definitely covered. Now, a massive disclaimer, revise everything because it could still come up. It could also come up on paper three, but the point is, and I know I've said it so many times, but it's because I want to make it really clear. The point is just to make sure that the topics we've gone through, you haven't ignored, you've done them in enough detail because the likelihood of them coming up is higher. Not a prediction, just the likelihood is higher. So useful to know to help you to prepare. Hopefully, as I said, you did find this helpful and make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell so you do not miss the video on what to expect for paper two and general topics overall. Plus there'll be some essay videos coming very, very shortly. But for now, that is it. Best of luck with your revision and I'll see you next week.